how is it that you deal with clients that that don't actually reveal much when it comes to the campaign hi guys my name is Deepak Shukla founder of the Pearl Lemon Group we're a business growth and development agency based in the UK USA as well as serving clients worldwide and here today in day number 60 we're here to talk about clients who just don't tend to reveal much over the phone and what 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 you need to do in those circumstances so if you need some support with your communications training whether internally or with your clients please please do reach out to us as well as click the link in the description below to get access to seven additional strategies not shared in this training and please do as i said like comment and hit the red subscribe button if you're getting value from these videos so look fundamentally at times you're going to get clients who just don't say much you know it comes to their onboarding form or it comes to the first time meeting and they're very monosyllabic they're very short answers they're very one word uh, certainly depending upon where they're from culturally you'll get clients that give you an abundance of resources and uh, resources and information versus clients who don't reveal much and despite your pronging and probing they don't have much more to say which is different from those who purposefully withhold it okay those who purposefully withhold it are looking to test your level of proactiveness and leadership and depending upon whether you can distinguish the two it's useful to anyway demonstrate proactivity and leadership these are things that we've spoken about in previous videos in terms of taking control of a call offering solutions and all of that fun stuff so that's something that you should lead with in calls in general anyway because it will stand you in in in, in good stead for whatever client you're working with um, now if you really need something from a client and they're not revealing much you need to also be direct with them something along the lines of Frank I really need this information to progress the campaign if we can't progress the campaign then what what are we doing here so something like that is is quite powerful now you do in some instances run the risk of them pausing to get things done now if that's a cha challenge of the campaign then you'll discover that and or you you risk that at the same time but you won't know that if they've not revealed much at that level and at that instance and to be honest with you in some cases when it comes to campaign onboarding we get such flimsy forms and then when you speak to them there's not much of a follow-up that really you have to trust your own gut and rely upon your own, rely upon your own gut and to this end that's why presenting ideas and strategies to clients who don't reveal much is potentially a good way to do it now those who don't reveal much also can sometimes be from a similar region. So if you look at the Eastern Bloc of Europe, you'll get people that are more stoic in their responses rather than talkative like those from, for example, Southern Europe. And there's a distinct difference between how much the reveal is, but also how useful the reveal is. Sometimes the reveal takes you down alleys that have nothing to do with what it is that you're trying to service. So focus and discipline at all times is important now um if for example you continue to chase a client we've got a couple of clients who just don't reveal much or don't want to talk much about what they're doing they still expect us to get a commercial result okay so the thing that you need to always remember as a guiding north north star some clients won't reveal much some clients will be non-responsive you know there's there's different variations of let's call it you know non-compliance if you will but ultimately, your clients are still paying you, and they're paying you to get a result in spite of all of that because, well, that's why you, to a degree, pay some experts. And of course, if they're not revealing much, then it also could be that they revealed enough in their view or there's nothing else that's more to reveal. So trying to challenge those two, those two items where they think there's nothing to reveal uh, or uh, I've forgotten the other one. That, that 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 can mean that you do nothing because there isn't much underneath it and therefore you just take control so practically take control of the campaign so practically let's give you some kind of key takeaways when it comes to dealing with clients who just don't reveal much so number one ask them to reveal more number two ask them to reveal more but scale up the urgency three ask them to reveal more and say if they don't the
will fail. Accept it, accept it, and and get on with it because they're still looking for a result at the end of the day because they're still looking for a result. That was the five. So look, asking them to reveal more makes sense. Asking them to reveal more but scaling up the urgency makes sense. Asking them to reveal more and say if they don't, the campaign will fail. They, you run the risk of potentially having the campaign pause, but more often than not, it won't do that. Accepting it and getting on with it is 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 probably a big thing that it's there's only so much you can do fundamentally uh, to help support clients and if they don't always want to carry out the changes that you you recommend you could change it to changes that you mandate meaning these changes are non-negotiable so uh, that would reveal that would go back to number three ask them to reveal more and say if they don't the campaign will fail. Accepting it and get on with it is 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 fine because that's what you just need to do in some 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 cases and in all cases, what any good client is looking for is someone who takes oh, charge of the. So that's something definitely that you know most clients will want from you regardless taking charge of the situation. So. If, for example, you are still unable to get the answers you need, just ask someone more experienced to see if they can support you. And then just apply your common sense, I'd call it, that, well, and uh, what, what would you do that's best? And relying upon your own common sense, your own insights to deliver the result, as, as well as combining that with asking someone more experienced. But fundamentally, these are the seven, these are the seven things to consider when it comes to dealing with clients who don't reveal much. Oh, and if whilst you're here, please do subscribe if you're enjoying these videos and I'll catch you in the next one.